Because crew is such a special part of, of what we're trying to achieve in Renault ...and <laughs> Okay, so we're very close to lunchtime and I promise I'll only be five minutes because the smells are um, <laughs> recording us to lunch. <laughs> Okay, so I'm, I'm, I'm going to give you a very quick yeah, introduction and overview to the, to the crew program. Um, so we are part of SANBI, which is the South African National Biodiversity Institute. And someone earlier uh, asked me what crew stands for. That's uh, for the custodians of brain and digital wildflowers. And um, essentially we have four main objectives. So, so the first is to update the information on the status and, and distribution of threatened plants. So, um, and, and, and this is really important because a lot of the information that we have, because we have such an incredible flora and such a diverse flora, and as Odette and other people mentioned, that this, thro uh, this flora is highly, highly threatened. Um, so, so we have lots of threatened plants and we need lots of information about where those species occur so that we can update their status. Um, and, then, and then we go out into the field and monitor these, these very um, threatened plants, so like the critically endangered and endangered species. Those are ones that are on the brink of extinction, and those are the, the species that we, that we focus on monitoring. Um, and then also really importantly to build awareness, and um, like, like Doug said earlier on, um, you know, the, the engagement that we have with, with, with landowners, for example, has been really um, important for, for landowners realizing what the importance of the Renostafalt is and what the importance of their threatened plants and those important plants are. So building awareness is a real key, um, key focus of our program. Um, and then also apart from just collecting the data, we like to get involved in, in actively conserving areas where, where these threatened plants occur. Okay, so how we do this is we involve local civil society groups and, and volunteers. Um, and there's a few of our volunteers sitting in this room today. Um, and, and they are basically amazing people that go out and they, they contribute their own time and their own efforts. And they go out and monitor and conserve these threatened plants. Um, and then we only focus on the highly threatened ecosystems. Um, the Renostafalt is one of the most threatened vegetation types um, and biomes in the, in, in the country. So it's a real, a real important focus for us. Um, and then with those, with capacitating and, and empowering local communities, they can be involved in, in conserving plants in their area. So, you know, it's not only up to the scientists and the botanists and the conservationists that, you know, that's, that's um, whose, uh, whose job it is to actually protect the species. It's the actual communities and people that live around where these certain plants occur that can actually get involved in conserving them. Um, and then, also one of the themes of today, I think, is, has been, you know, building these very strong partnerships and, and crew has um, also had the success in, in, in building partnerships between, you know, people that's doing conservation, local communities, and the conservation agencies and the land, land use decision makers. And that's been a really important process of, of, of um, ensuring that our species are, are conserved. Okay, so this is just a map showing you um, where we operate, and you can see most of the groups that we work with is in the Western Cape, um, and that's where most of the threatened plants are sitting, um, but we do have other nodes in the country, so we do work nationally. Okay, so just the progress thus far, we've, we've sampled over 2,500 sites across the Western and Eastern Cape, and the Northern Cape. Um, we've collected data on 800 species, 
Um, 15 new species have been discovered by crew volunteers and, and, and associated partners. And then we've rediscovered species, 13 species that are thought to be extinct. And, and, and this is really amazing work of volunteers that you know, are not paid to do this. They go out and they, and they spend their time looking at plants and, and trying to find them. Okay, so I'm just going to work through a couple of examples of amazing discoveries that our volunteers have made. Um, so this is a species that's um, um, known from the Palm Mountain Reserve, Agarilobium um, and Castisissimum. It was last recorded in 1827, hmm. which is a long time ago, and uh, it was rediscovered by, by one of our groups in 2009. And, and, and strangely enough, like not much was known about the species, and, and now that we've been monitoring it, we found that it's a species that grows you know, the first few years after fire and then it disappears and that's probably one of the reasons why it hasn't been seen for so long. Okay, and then another one of those discoveries around the, um, on the Tigerberg area, this is a, a Planea schlechteri, um, it's in the daisy family. Um, and as you can see, it's, it's a very drab, grey looking bush, it's not very exciting and this is also one of the things that our volunteers have been involved in, and it's not only focusing on the very pretty um, showy plants, but it's also the things that are usually um, overlooked in the felt. And um, so, so there's a species that occurs at, um, at the private nature reserve in uh, close to Paul, um, and it was only known from three collections, and the other the other collections, and last year it was discovered. Um, and it's actually when when the species was rediscovered, we found that. We, we were actually walking past this plant for quite a few years and we didn't realize that it was this particular species and we just ignored it as one of those because it flowers in, in December and, and hardly any botanists are out looking in the plant in December. <laughs> okay, and this is a, a species on the Omerberg, it's Erica Jasminiflora. And before 2010, this species was only known from two plants at Shores Pass. And we were really concerned that this species is going to go extinct. And, and since 2003, we've been monitoring it um, and, and just looking at the decline in the population at Shores Pass. So it went um, from, from five plants in 2003 when we were monitoring it and all the way down to two plants. And we were really concerned. And then one of the volunteers, he, um, in the Yemen and Ida Valley, they found a new population, and that population is now 2,000 plants. So sure. it's gone from almost being completely extinct to now actually having a, a, a viable population, and, and, and we're not so concerned about this plant anymore. So it's still very threatened, but there's still a viable option for conserving it. Cool. And then this is just, uh, um, I think there's the last slide. There's are just two of the rediscoveries that we've made um, last year. Um, the one on the, on the left hand side is Oxalis levis. Um, and, and crew has uh, two botanical holidays so far. One is called Maris Modis Day, which is in April. Um, and, uh, and where we go out, and uh, it's a group of plants that flower at that time of the year. And last year we promulgated Oxalis Day, which is in June. Um, and then we go out and we, we dedicate the day to, to looking for other species. And this was found last year, last year in 1933, and it was a new population that we discovered. Um, and then the photo on the right, um, also not a very exciting looking plant, but this was only known from one collection. The, the actual specimen that they collected to describe the species, and it was collected in 1951. And nobody's ever seen that again since the person that collected the specimen. So, so we went out looking for the species. We thought it was extinct, and um, and, and eventually last year we found we found a population of this of the species um, close to Booster. Cool. And then and then just a last um, a last bit of information. We've recently launched a new website called iSpot, um, and it's where people like yourselves can go and share your love for nature, your observations in nature um, with, with everybody else. So um, the website address is www.icepot.org.za and please if you, if you have any photographs of, of anything in biodiversity, 
go and join the website and, and put it on and share your observations with all of us. Thank you. Um, I think that just gives you a, a, a broader perspective on the work volunteers can do uh, for conservation of the Nostafel. To see these people on a Saturday morning, and I always thought there was something, be something wrong with them. <laughs> you know, coming out from Cape Town and wherever, and forming this group and spending the whole day on your farm. It's incredible. It just shows that they love what they do.